I am a parent. Um, my son took the test in April and he woke up on April 18th and said, Mom, I don't want to go to school. And I was shocked because my children always want to go to school. And I said, why, honey? And he said, the tests are boring. We spent weeks getting ready for them. We can't finish them. They didn't give us enough time. And I don't want to do it. I have a stomach ache. So that rang alarm bells off in my head. I have to fight for my child because New York State passed laws that are hurting my own children. I have two children in college, they're doing very well. They went through the same system as my young uh, son. Why wouldn't my young son do well in college? He will. He does not need a standardized test to tell him how he's doing. I'm here today to support my son who does not uh, appreciate any high stakes testing. He got sick actually having to go to school one day because he was so fed up with all the testing. So I thought that I'd start um, getting people together to talk about it and collaborate and see how we can change things. I am a parent. My name is Melissa Barber. I'm sure many of you know me by now. Um, I have a ninth grader and a kindergartner who will be entering school this year. Last year I had my child um, in eighth grade opt out of the standardized test. For that, he was punished. His school district punished him and four other children in the district who refused the standardized test by taking extracurricular sports away from them. The children in elementary school had recess taken away from them, and my son had baseball taken away from him. I am still fighting. I will continue to fight. I will write my letter again this year indicating that my kindergartner nor my, my ninth grader will be subject to any local, state, or any sort of standardized testing that will jeopardize the stress level that we put on our children today in school. I will fight, I will continue to fight. We need to get the word out, we need to let parents know how dangerous these standardized tests are. It's all about the money, money, money. We need to put money back in our classrooms. I am also a teacher, I need money in my classroom. I don't need money for standardized testing, I need money for books, I need money for supplies. I need money to teach my children and for my children to be taught. It's time to take a stand and come together. We need to tell our children they're wonderful. We need to tell our children they're marvelous. And we can't do that in the current system of education because as soon as they enter that system, we start looking for what's wrong with them. We start looking to classify them and drug them because we can't handle them because they put 25 of them in a classroom with one adult. That's old Mother Hubbard. We can't put them and put them to bed. We have to become conscious of the depth of this system. It's not broken, it's working perfectly. We have to change the system so that it focuses on the gifts and talents of all of our children because every child has a gift. Every child is talented. Every child is wonderful. Every child is a blessing. Make Thank no you. mistake, Common Core is a federally based program fueled by taxpayer funds and established by promises of dollars to states that participated in Race to the Top. It was snuck into the states without proper, proper legislation, le legislative action while they were not even in session. Further, it was never tested and wasn't even complete before being put into the schools. It, as if that were not enough, few educators were involved in the construction of Common Core, and some of those who were refused to endorse it. What we have now is a system in which our schools are being regimented. We realize our students are being over-tested. Um, the curriculum is being narrowed. Teachers are feeling as if this is a career they no longer want to have or no longer want to enter. And I want to say something about why this is occurring. So I would give three reasons. One reason is that uh, this is a way for people to promote their careers. We already see the chancellor and the commissioner saying that don't worry, the test scores are down, but they're going to go up next year. And they're going to take credit for it, even though we have no reason to believe that the test scores mean anything. So this is a way to promote careers. Secondly, it's a way to shift the blame. So we have high poverty, increasing poverty in the United States. Uh, we have increasing productivity, but no increase in wages. We have all sorts of issues going on. We, ha we have wars that we're involved in. And yet what they do is they blame teachers and schools for the problems in our society. 
so that we ignore all these other issues. So it's a way of shifting the blame. And thirdly, it's a way of making profit and of, of sending money to for-profit companies. So this is just a letter sent from this, US, this uh, state of New York State Education Department to a superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, I know who the superintendent is, but the name has been blocked, okay. blacked out. All right. The point of this letter, so it's, you know, the state sends letters to superintendents and other folks all the time. Mm -hmm. The point is that here on the top right corner, next to the State Department of Ed logo, is Pearson's logo. Mm -hmm. which Pearson is a published, the largest publishing company in the world and is getting, you know, millions. <coughs> Who knows? We're trying to, trying to figure that out, but it's getting, basically getting paid to millions of dollars to, uh, to consult with, to work with the state education department. And I just find it amazing that a for-profit company has their logo on a governmental organization. This is called the privatization of the of government, which we are seeing at many levels besides education. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. Learning has been put on hold. Learning has been put on hold. Testing kids can cause them stress. Testing kids can cause them stress. Now it's time to take a rest. Now it's time to take a rest. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Are we weak or strong? We're strong. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Break it on down now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. CJ Eats, uh, Coalition for Justice and Education, took the liberty of emailing all the principals who were coming in some suggested questions that they asked. Now, the problem is, is that I don't know whether or not they're going to ask them or not, but uh, we'll may email them to the commissioner and to the Board of Regents and see if we can get some answers for them. But I wanted to share a couple with you just to show you the direction that we're going. Uh, the highly respected Giselle Institute has issued a resolution requesting that U.S. Educator, education leaders reject Common Core standards because they ignore the developmental research on children's reading processes, especially for students in grades K through four. What is your response, Dr. King, to that resolution? The results of the recent New York State Common Core tests are perceived to be a disaster by many parents, teachers, administrators, and community leaders. Many critics claim that the Common Core curriculum was neither piloted nor enough training given to teachers before the tests were given, therefore rendering the test results invalid. How do you respond to that, Dr. King? In order to receive more federal uh, race to the top funding, states including New York State and teachers unions were coerced into supporting Common Core, APPR, and more charter schools. Do you believe this is a reasonable democratic way to organize support for new top-down curriculum and charter schools, Dr. King? All the motivational research counters the use of students' high-stakes standardized test scores for evaluating teachers and students. As a result, both teacher and student motivation rapidly decline and a strong narrowing of the curriculum results. Did the New York State Education Department consult some of the nation's leading motiv motivational experts before implementing the APPR policy? If not, why not? Commissioner King and the interests that his agenda represents are nothing new here. It's been going on for quite some time. It's a larger corporate agenda with education uh, that includes standardized testing, privatization, an increased proportion of charter schools, defunding of public ed education in general, the political stigmatization of teachers, scapegoating, all that kind of stuff. To say nothing of disciplinary measures and all kinds of things like that. So, the thing that's important to know about that is that this is a large concerted fight that's been happening for years and will continue to happen for years to come. What, what I'd like to say is what's necessary to really beat back the corporate agenda in education is not to just say, don't increase standardized tests, don't cut the funding to the schools, is to say, we need to get rid of standardized testing as a basic model for education. We also need to say we need not a little bit, but a lot more money for public education in every school district. Also, it's important to remember that even in recent local history, right, there have been large protests by students, 
parents and teachers against budget cuts of all kinds. And if you'll recall, a couple of years ago, we beat mayoral control from the most popular Democrats. <laughs> It's not like we haven't done this before. It's not like we can't do this again. Let's go for real education reform that moves us forward, not just defends against attacks. Excuse me, King, but every teacher in every classroom, in every school in the district knows by the end of the first month in school where their students stand. We do not need standardized tests to tell us this. We know that our kids are not doing well. We don't need standardized high stakes tests to tell us that. We need support in teaching and learning and it is stealing resources to pay for all these tests and steal instructional time from our kids, but we need a support of instruction, not labeling our kids as failures. We already know they're not doing well. That's, that's old news. Testing is not learning. Testing is not learning. He stated that he's going to try to change the laws so that he can get rid of school boards locally for failing districts. So we see that as the first thing you do is you brand a district as failing and then you get rid of the school board. So it's about um, top-down control. Where does democracy fall into that equation? And what democracy <laughs> is falling out of it, I was just talking with one person about that. The commissioner has uh, said, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, that for districts that have low test scores or for, who are failing fiscally, that he has the right to take them over and disband the school boards. Uh, and since Rochester is the lowest scoring school district in the country, in the state, it, oh, okay. I'd be interested in what happens at this meeting today, but it might be because he's going to indicate that he's going to take over the schools. You can see that, that the pieces are being set up in a certain pathway, and it would be very easy to go down in that direction. We have been labeled as the worst scoring district in the state. Now, if he's going to start removing local school boards, where is he going to start? Right here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for coming out um, and supporting my kids. Um, I ain't got no degree or none of that. I'm just going to give it to you straight talk here. And Bruce, you said there was very few educators um, in the design of this Common Core. When you talk about the early childhood learning part of it, there were no educators involved in it. Um, it's like being bamboozled. It, and no one else wasn't involved in it. There's been no parent. This what he should be coming here. No implementation should be no implementation should be going on. They should be coming checking with the parents and the teachers. Hello, the, people, the, the, the people that are on the ground are right here. They they just implement and then they're coming along and they're just going with things and they're bamboo what we call bamboozling us. The folks who know about how to improve children's instruction are the folks who work with the kids themselves, not somebody from, not politicians from Albany, folks who live far away. King in there is trying to set up with all of this standardized stuff a system to make public education fail, prove that it's failed, and then come in with a private model. And we who live in the hen house need to take charge of the hen house. Right. We have to run the foxes out. Teachers and parents know what's best for their kids. Some of those frightened administrators in there may know what's best for kids too, but they're frightened. We need them to be advocates for our kids. We need to be advocates for our kids. But most of all, we have to understand that we are being, we have to face the fox, and we have to run the fox out of the school system. The silence of the people.